Welcome to Tax Law GH and welcome to our video on withholding taxes. In this session, we'll talk about probably one of the topics that you need to really understand if you are to get a good understanding of um, income taxes as a whole. It is important to mention that even though this video is on withholding taxes, this is withholding taxes on income. Or to be more specific, this topic relates to withholding on income tax. As you may already be aware, or as you find out in our subsequent sessions, there's a separate concept known as withholding on VAT or value added tax withholding or the concept of withholding on value added taxes, which is a completely different concept from this concept of withholding taxes. It is important to mention also that this concept of withholding taxes will fall primarily under the Income Tax Act of 2015, Act 896, and its associated regulations um, of 2016, LI 2244. The concept of withholding on VAT will, however, fall under the Value Added Tax Act of 2013, Act 870. So, going straight into today's um, topic, I'd like to show you a few rates. Let's not dwell too much on the rates at this point. Just know that when it comes to withholding tax, the law prescribes different rates for different transactions. Key thing to take away from this particular minute or this particular session is that there is a key distinguishing factor between withholding taxes as it relates to resident persons and as it relates to non-resident persons. As I expect you to have done, if you have watched the video on basic principles of income tax, we discussed into a lot of detail what it meant for a person to be deemed to be tax resident or tax non-resident. So if you haven't, please do yourself a favor and watch the video on basic principles of income tax. It's a three-part series, I believe. So now just know that there are a number of rates for different transactions, and these are for resident persons. We'll see similar rates for non-residents. We'll come to the rates um, when we are done with the whole topic, so just don't bother too much at this point. Just know that there are different withholding tax rates for different transactions for different persons based on whether or not they are tax resident or tax non-resident. Now that we've established that, let's look at one thing that is actually a withholding tax by the nature and by the way the law defines it, which is withholding by an employer. This has been covered into a very significant detail in the video series on employment income taxation. So if you want to understand this concept really well, I recommend that you look at the video series on withholding or the employment income taxation um, series. What we need to know here is that how with, um, withholding on employment income is done or how accounting for employment income is done is based on the concept of withholding taxes. What do I mean? We are saying here that an employer is required to withhold tax from any payments that is to be included in ascertaining the income of an employee from an employment. The obligation of an employer to withhold tax above is not reduced or extinguished because he has a right under or is under any obligation to deduct and withhold any other amount or any other law provides that the income from employment shall not be reduced or subject to an attachment. We've explained this into a lot more detail in the topic on income from employment or taxation of employment income. What you need to know here is that when an employer makes a payment to an employee, the employer is required to withhold tax and then pay the tax to the Ghana Revenue Authority on behalf of the employee. This is to satisfy the employee's income tax obligation and not that of the employer. So based on this, let me now ease you into the meaning of the term withhold or what it means to say you are withheld tax. The concept of withholding tax really is an advanced payment of a person's income tax. So let's use two people, a person A and person B. Person B provides services to person A. Person A pays person B money for the services person B provided to person A. 
Now, because person B has provided services to person A, person B has made income, which because it's a service income, and let's assume it's from a business, person B would have earned business income. Now, the GRA has one or two options really. Either they wait for person B himself or herself to come and declare to the GRA that I provided services to person A and made this amount, so here's my tax. Or the GRA can say, you know what, let me begin collecting taxes from person B in advance so that by the time person B comes to me to declare his taxes, I would have at least collected some money up front. So the law will mandate person A to when making payment to person B, just take a little portion and come and pay to the GRA. So in this scenario I'm given, I said person B provided services to person A. So assuming person B and person A are both resident persons, then person A would ordinarily withhold at 7.5%. So instead of paying person B the full 100%, it takes out 7.5 and pays the remaining to person B. This is the concept of withholding tax. So when person A is paying person B, he withholds a certain percentage and then he needs to give person B proof that indeed I have withheld money from you and I'm paying this money to the GR. So we call something a withholding tax certificate or a withholding tax credit certificate. So after withholding, person A must issue to person B a withholding tax credit certificate showing that indeed person B has satisfied his tax liability at that point. Let's not go into the concept or the details of final taxes and taxes on account. That's a different concept. We will delve into that a lot more better. But for those who don't understand withholding taxes, the whole idea is this. When someone is paying someone something, in advance of satisfying the recipient, the person receiving the money's income tax liability, the person making the payment takes a little part and pays it to GRA 15 days after the month ends, just so GRA gets some money up front while GRA rate waits for the recipient or person B to come and declare his taxes and then satisfy his liability for the year. So just see withholding taxes as an advance payment of income taxes by a person. Right. Okay. Now that we've settled that, let's look at a few um, in-depth concepts of um, withholding tax. So let's look at withholding from investment returns. We are saying here that subject to the below conditions, a resident person is required to withhold tax at the specified rates, which we saw in the table, and I'll show you again. Whether the person pays any dividend, lottery winning, but take note this has been amended, so there is no requirement to. Um, pay withholding on lottery winnings um, after the amendment. So interest, natural resource payment, rent or royalty to another person and the payment has a source in the country. So anytime anybody is making payment for any of these income streams, the person must withhold tax and then pay to GRA on behalf of the person receiving the money. Right? We are saying the above does not apply to payments subject to withholding by employer. So we are saying that where an employer is making payment to an employee that is under a different scheme which is known as a pay as you earn system so the employee employer withholds from the employee's income but it's not a fixed rate as you may be aware if the employee is a resident individual then we use the personal income tax rate which is the um, zero percent all the way to 30 percent marginal top tax rate right we are saying it also does not apply to payments made by an individual unless made in conducting a business so ideally i we do not expect people like you and myself to go to your landlord if it's your own domestic um, residence or where you live primarily and tell your landlord that i am paying you my rent and i am withholding tax you are an individual he's an individual you are not making the payments in the conduct of a business and you can't withhold tax jerry does not trust you the individual to actually withhold and come and pay to them so Generally, um, individuals are not withholding agents. They cannot withhold tax unless um, the general rule is that that thing is done or the payment is in the course of conducting a business. Also, interest paid to a resident financial institution is not covered by the above um, statement. 
and any payment that's an exempt amount must not be withheld on. So if you remember um, our video on income tax basic principles, I think it was the third video, we spoke into details about um, exempt amounts. We mentioned the number of income amounts that were exempt from income tax. The general principle is anytime you are paying someone who is exempt from income tax, you shouldn't withhold on them. And let me take you back to the example of person A and person B. If person B renders service or sells a good to person A, and person A is paying person B for the good or the service, and the concept of withholding tax says person A should only withhold if it is in advanced settlement of person B taxes, then it only makes sense that if person B is indeed exempt from income tax, then person A should not withhold anything. That is why, for instance, if in the examples we gave in the exempt amounts lecture, please go back to it if you've not seen it yet. We said, for example, um, the income of a public university or a government sponsored educational institution was exempt from income tax. So if you are making payments to a government, let's say in the University of Ghana, all things being equal, we do not expect you to withhold on them because the University of Ghana, from their core income as being a university, which is government run or government sponsored, is not subject to income tax. So all things being equal, you shouldn't withhold on them because the concept of withholding tax will fail if you are to withhold on them. They don't have income tax per se to pay so they don't have any advance payment for you to withhold on if that makes sense then we move on to another concept so we've spoken about withholding from investment return let's talk about withholding from the supply of goods service fees and other contract payments we are saying that where a resident person um, makes payments for any of the below they are required to withhold tax as long as the service fee has a source in Ghana. So I'm trying to see, um, if you remember once again, when we were talk talking about the concept of residence, we spoke about um, so the source rules and the fact that um, once an income had a source in Ghana, it had an attributable nexus or connection or link to Ghana and we had to find a way to tax it. So I'm saying that when you pay fees or allowances to a resident, director, manager, trustee, or board member, then you need to withhold tax. Generally, this is at the rate of 20%. So when you make payments to anybody who is a member of a board of directors, a manager, and they are resident, you withhold tax at 20%. The next one is if you um, pay um, any service fees to an examiner, an invigilator, a supervisor of an examination, or anyone who does part-time teaching or part-time lecturing, you also withhold tax. The law says it should be at 10%. Don't bother about the rates too much at the stage. Just know the concept. So these are different examples of um, income streams that the law requires you to withhold on. Another one is if you pay anyone an endorsement fee, you pay them a commission as a lottery receiver or agent, you pay them a commission as a sales agent, you pay them a commission as a resident insurance agent, um, and any other supply of services. All of these are subject to withholding tax so the concept of withholding tax generally is that like i said it's an advanced settlement of a person's income tax liability and the law provides different rates depending on whether or not the recipient is resident in ghana or deemed to be tax non-resident in ghana we are saying also that a resident person is required to withhold tax where that person pays a service fee or an insurance premium with a source in Ghana to a non-resident person. What I'll tell you here is that also what we are saying is if you are making payment to a non-resident person, remember we said that as long as the income has a source in Ghana, we need to find a way to tax it. So even though you are making payment to a non-resident, if there is a linkage to Ghana, then we will have to withhold an appropriate non-resident withholding tax rate. If you watch this carefully also, we said if you are making payment for an insurance premium with a source in Ghana to a non-resident person, you need to withhold. We're specific here. What it means is that generally, when you are making payment of insurance premium to a resident insurance company, that is exempt from income tax. We'll look at that into details very soon. Then we are saying also that resident person, other than an individual, 
still to emphasize that please do not go around when you are buying things at the mall to tell them mall attendants that you want to withhold because as we'll see very soon when you buy a good or you enter into a contract for a good and you are making payments to the person who sold to you you are required to withhold tax at the rate of three percent if it, it exceeds a certain threshold of 2000 cities we'll come to that later but don't go into the accra mall or don't go to shop right buy all your things it exceeds 2000 and you tell the shop attendants that you are going to pay them 97 percent of the amount because you've withheld three percent and you are going to gra to pay the tax to them they might arrest you take note you are an individual and generally unless in the course of conducting a business you are not a withholding agent so i saying a resident person other than an individual is required to withhold tax on the gross amount of the payment where the person makes payments to someone for the supply of goods the supply of works or the supply of services in respect of the contract between the payee and the resident person we are saying there's a threshold so we're saying the above applies to a contract between a payee and a resident person where the amount of the contract exceeds 2000 ghana cities also we are saying that to determine whether a contract qualifies for the 2000 cd threshold two or more contracts in respect of the same goods works or services shall be treated as one contract so let's say someone wants to outsmart the system and not withhold tax so he enters into contract with um, let's say someone to paint their office building so he gets a painter to do some painting he wants to paint his um, office building change the color from what um white to blue right the painter comes in and he says you know what i'm a withholding agent i'm a company you are a company i want to pay you um, for painting all things being equal because it's a service as we'll see very soon the rate for withholding on services is 7.5 percent so you say you know what if you invoice me 2000 cds for the painting job i would have to withhold on you so why don't you withhold why don't you invoice me 1500 and then no withholding tax will apply then you paint the first floor of our building the next month you just come come and paint the next the first floor the ground floor you've done that so it paint the first floor let me pay you another 1500 so that we never reach the 2000 city threshold what the law says is no it doesn't work that way as long as you are having a contract with a person no matter how many times you split the contract into sub parts we will combine the contract as one so we don't care that he painted the first floor or the ground floor for 1005 and then later painted the first floor for another 1005 we'll combine the two in, in total it's going to be 3000 Ghana cities it exceeds the 2000 Ghana cities and you have to withhold another scenario is someone says well when i was paying the first amount of 1005 i did not know whether or not i would need to paint my top floor so at that point of 1500 it wasn't up to 2000 so i did not withhold tax what the law says is if you are able to foresee reasonably that you enter into more contracts with that person during the year such that in total over the year it will exceed 2000 then you need to withhold even when you, you make your first payment which is less than 2000 so remember that in the whole year as long as a combined contract with that person exceeds 2000 ghana cities you need to withhold tax so even if you miss the first withholding because you thought you never deal with that person during the year and later on you have a dealing with them or you enter into another contract with them you will need to go back to withhold on the first one because when we add everything during the year you would have exceeded the 2000 ghana cities threshold it's very important to remember this um, concept so once again when you withhold on goods the rate generally to a resident person is three percent when you withhold on works the rate to a resident person is five percent and when you withhold on services to a resident person the rate is 7.5 percent then we are saying a number of things are exempt from the requirement i just mentioned we are saying when you make a premium payment to a resident insurance company no withholding tax will apply remember i said that anytime you are making payments to a non-resident insurance company then you would have to withhold tax i said that a few minutes ago that will be at the rate of five percent as we see in the table when we get there 
But what I'm saying here is if you are making a premium payment to a resident insurance company, an insurance company that is resident in Ghana, then you are not required to withhold tax at all. So learn this here that payments to a resident insurance company or insurance premium payment to a resident insurance company is exempt from withholding tax. However, when you are making insurance premium payments to a non-resident insurance company, you need to withhold at a rate of 5% generally. The next exemption is where you make payment under a contract for the sale of goods, which constitutes trading stock of both the vendor and the purchaser, then withholding tax is also exempt. An example is company A and company B both deal in, let's say, um, they both deal in sugar. So company A buys sugar from company B and sells the sugar to someone else. Sometimes company B also buys sugar from company A and sells to customers. So they just trade with each other. What the law is saying that if you are selling goods and the good or the subject of the transaction, the subject of the contract is your trading stock or is a constitute trading stock of both of you, then no withholding tax will apply. So remember I told you that when you are making payments for goods, ordinarily you would have withheld at 3%. But because this contract constitutes a sale of goods, which is trading stock for both the vendor and the purchaser, we will not withhold tax. So company A will not withhold 3% when they are buying sugar from company B. Company B also not withhold um, tax when they are dealing with company A when it comes to um, the sale of sugar. So remember, where the sale of goods or the contracts constitute trading stock of both the vendor and the purchaser, no withholding tax will apply. The next is where the Commissioner General for a good cause shown exempts a person in writing from withholding tax, then that person is also um, exempt from withholding tax or where the Commissioner General is satisfied that a person has a satisfactory tax record and exempts that person in writing, then that person will be exempt from withholding tax. But remember that this you would generally have to apply to the Commissioner General that you know what my name is company ABC. I deal in XYZ and I am writing to you because I want to be exempted from withholding tax. The general principle is this exemption does not cover every single income stream. It has to be on a withholding tax stream by withholding tax stream basis. What do I mean? If you want to be exempted from the 7.5% service withholding tax, let's say you are a company that is into um, you provide um, event management services, so you organize weddings and stuff. You, you are a service provider. So ideally, when someone is paying you, or when a company or a corporate entity is paying you, they should withhold at 7.5. You, the event management company, can write to the GRA and say, I am company ABC. I deal in XYZ events. I am writing to you for an application for you to exempt me from withholding tax on services. So when the GRA receives your letter, he looks at your tax record and sees that, oh, you are a very compliant taxpayer. You have a satisfactory tax record. Then he writes back to you and says, upon reviewing your um, tax file, going through your compliance record, I have deemed you someone I can trust. So I have exempted you from the 7.5% recording tax. In that case, you keep that letter as evidence such that when you enter into contracts with any other person, you attach that letter and tell the person that this is the letter from the GRA that says that I should not be withheld on when it comes to services. So now instead of someone paying you and withholding 7.5%, they'll pay you the full hundred percent amount because you have that exemption. But remember that exemption is not perpetual. You'd have to write to the GRA to all things being equal, renew it on a biannual basis or generally, it runs for six months from what I've seen in practice. So it's not even a full year exemption. You have to renew it at least um, twice a year. So probably give you from January to end of um, June. Then you have another one that ends in December. So it's just a way for Jerry to check that are you still compliant? Are you someone I can still trust to not be withheld on? And that will apply. So I'm saying that a person who is granted an exemption above, which relates to trading stocks of both vendor and purchase, that's those who have the exemption that because you both deal in the same goods or you both deal in goods that are your trading stock, um, you are exempt from withholding tax. The law says that at the end of every calendar quarter, that's at the end of every three months, 
um, you are required to submit a list of all payments which would have been withheld on but for the exemption we are saying here that submit to the GRE at the end of every calendar quarter a list of all transactions that you entered into that if not for the fact that you were exempted from withholding tax by virtue of dealing in your trading stock with another person who is also dealing in trading stock would have been subject to withholding tax report all of that to GRE to tell GRE that yes I acknowledge that I'm exempted from withholding tax by virtue of the fact that I deal in trading stock with someone else this is a list of all transactions I did during the quarter and this is the respective amount so that GRE can track that okay this is the quantity of um, goods and goods that have been dealt with or dealt in over the past period and this is the potential can we say tax loss not even tax loss but they want to know what you have dealt in and the number of transactions you've done even though you have an exemption so they want to have an eye on everything you are doing so let's pause here and we'll continue in the next part on withholding taxes so as usual don't forget to smash the like button if you like if you like this and um share this video within your entire network i'll catch you soon